Outrocast. Well, Jonas, thank you for taking the time. Good afternoon. How was your day going, aside from answering the same five questions over and over and over again? You know what? It's been awesome. I'm having a beautiful day. It's sunny in LA. We're having a movie coming out on Monday, so it's super exciting. That movie coming out on Monday is The Hopeful? That is The Hopeful, premiering on the 17th of April and the 18th in uh, theaters all across America. Now, how long did you have to keep it a secret that you were working on that film? Because I find that most people usually wait a long time to announce that they're working on a film based on how long the film process takes. Yeah, you're totally right. I mean, it was really, I think I had the songs for this film. I wrote them two years ago for the film. And it's taken two years of waiting for the moment to arrive. And here it is. So it's we're all so excited and so grateful. Were those songs ever pitched for another project or they were entirely written for The Hopeful? They were actually entirely written for The Hopeful. So Kyle Portbury, the uh, amazing Emmy award-winning director, he reached out to me. We were, we were actually working on a different project. And um, he said, Jonas, I have this film. It's a real heart project of mine and I would love for you to see it and see if maybe there is a song to be written. And I saw his rough cut of the film. So it was very early stage. And um, I just loved it. And I thought, this is such an incredible story. And I ran up to the piano, actually, and I wrote the first song that ended up being the end title. And the film is also featured in the film Hope is on the Way. And then after that, I, I was so inspired. So I wrote another one called Made for You. But he only asked for one song. So I was like, OK, which one shall I send? And I asked my engineer, Matt. And he's like, bro, you have to send both. And I sent both. And both ended up making it in the film. Wow. And when did the Stockholm Symphony Orchestra or Studio Orchestra rather become involved in this whole thing? Because sometimes people write with the orchestra in their head and then other times people kind of add it on as the last thing. No, totally. So when I write music, I often can already imagine hearing the strings in my head. And I collaborate with an amazing string arranger and conductor, uh, musician Eric Arvinder in Stockholm, who is become a friend of mine and he's just so so gifted at what he does so I sent him the song and it's kind of rough state and I thought like this is something um you think we can work with and do something beautiful with for the orchestra and he goes absolutely and he sent me back the arrangement and I was like in tears it was it was really beautiful yeah so you mentioned two years ago this all kind of started so it must be a relief to be able to now talk about it and all that. But I, I'd also have to imagine you've written a hundred songs since then. Yeah, I have actually. I've been working on so many different projects in the meantime. Yeah. And, um, it was actually really cool because I feel with this project, it's been such a global collaboration. Um, mm -hmm. We started, uh, I wrote the songs in LA, recorded them in Sydney, Australia, and Stockholm, Sweden. Yeah. Mastered in New York. So it's like, it's like a total kind of global collaboration. I worked with um, Halle Ask, who's one of my favorite producers. He um, co-produced a song with me and really found, you know, that balance of of epic but intimate. Yeah. Which is sometimes really difficult with music to find a dance where it kind of just goes small, but then explodes, but then goes small again, but keeping the heart. Um, so it was such a joy to collaborate with him as well on this yeah in other words dynamics exactly yeah i mean that's a thing about your music where it is intimate yet it is arena ready uh of assuming it is a more subdued kind of crowd that's not moshing yes. so so when it comes to that does the chorus usually come to you first that's a great question i it all depends on what I'm writing for. Sometimes it will be like a lyric, like for um, Hope is on the Way, I had, I saw the film and I, I really felt this is a movie about that hope, it's never too late to believe in hope. And I thought of that phrase, help is on the way. And I'm like, what if I change to hope is on the way? And uh, had that line and then I kind of wrote the song around that lyric uh, with Made For You kind of just came not from me, but through me. That was more of a, like a, one of those downloads. I call them free downloads from heaven, when you just, <laughs> it just comes, you know? 
Yeah, right. When you think about it, just songs do come from nowhere. So hopefully you're in the right headspace and listening to the good ideas as opposed to the bad ideas. But yeah, I mean, it, it, still, it still amazes me, man, when it happens. Like, because you don't, as a songwriter and artist, you, you never really know if it is going to happen again. You're like, is this the last song I ever wrote? Or so every time it, it happens and you feel that you're just being, a, I don't know, a conduit or a vessel, and it's just such a, a beautiful feeling to be able to take that gift and pass it on and give it to other people. And uh, it's been incredible watching this song. It's been out a week now. And um, just watching people's stories about how this song is speaking to them and touching them and giving them mm -hmm. hope in their situations, which I think is the purpose, right, of, of, of music is to do that. When you started out with songwriting, are you, you somebody who had a developmental deal as a solo artist and then fell into the co-writing? Or is it the other way around where co-writing and then you decided, okay, I also have to have a solo career? It was actually kind of two paths kind of were walked out together. Almost like I I was co-writing and being an artist. And they, they've always kind of stayed side by side, actually, in my musical journey. Mm -hmm. I love the idea when I'm a writer for another artist, I can give voice and help them. Uh, find words and melodies to their story. Um, and sometimes yeah. that's working with someone who's a teenager, you know, who's a young kid who's just have just had the heart broken for the first time or is writing for, I mean, I just did the last record for Barbara Streisand and I wrote those songs for her and she is, you know, 80 now and is so established and has had lived so much. So for her, writing for her is a very different thing from writing for like, um, a teenage artist, you know, so, but I love both. Both have a really special thing to me. And then my own solo project is where I can really just express my own heart and my own journey and my kind of own journal almost and give that to the world. So this, this, all of them mean something to me. So yes, Streisand and Bocelli and Nicole Scherzinger, the greats upon the greats, I get it. But one thing from your bio that I'm still trying to investigate and figure out, uh -huh. it, it, if you're ready for an off-brand topic here. Let's go. And that's, it mentions that you've written with members of Supergrass, and I love that band. <laughs> yes. What happened? Where was that? Did we ever hear any of that material? You know what? We were, I was living in London for a while. And I got a phone call from my a &R and he was like, do you want to go up north and work with Supergrass? And I was like, yes. And it was so fun. I mean, those boys are so talented. And yeah. what people actually forget about them is how actually brilliant songwriters they are. Like some of those songs have become like evergreens that are still played yeah. globally today. And they were written all those years ago. So I love that, like idea of they can take different genres and you can like mash them together and we wrote some really cool songs that i hope still will see the light of day i'm still waiting for that so oh got it and then it also mentioned a collaboration with members of peter bjorn and john did any of that ever come out um still in process too there's some really good songs there they're awesome too bjorn is such a talented um producer and and songwriter and musician and those guys have just yeah always being for me being swedish they're also swedish and yes they, our kind of journeys were similar where we had this kind of global vision for our music and and here we are kind of traveling the world you know it's amazing well if i can generalize here um most of my favorite genres were perfected by the swedes hey. because because when you go yeah most people go yeah abba ace of base whatever but metal and punk, what always came out of Sweden to me was the best. They yeah. refined what may have started elsewhere. And then they figured out the formula, cracked the code and made it better. Hence your Max Martins of the world, hence Absolutely. the metal and punk. Now over to you here. Um, you, oh, most of your success here in the States has been on faith-based, adult contemporary kind of things. But it sounds like you're open to writing for rock and harder edge stuff if it's the right artist absolutely like i love i just i think what's amazing with rock music and metal is it's actually very very melodic and you can strip down those songs and they're actually quite complex when you play them on the piano they're very 
just beautiful. I was collaborating with Bob Ezrin. I don't know if you know Bob. Oh, produced Kiss and Alice Cooper. I love Bob Ezrin from that's Canada, right. right? That's right. Yeah. And Bob actually produced the last Bocelli record, which I co Oh. And what is crazy about that, but it actually makes perfect sense because Bob has a musicality coming from the rock background. And Bocelli comes from the classical world. And they're very intertwined. And they have, they have so much in common. And Bob just... I mean, their album for Bocelli that Bob produced went number one in yeah. the U.S. and the U.K. It's the first contemporary classical record that has ever gone to number one in both the U.S. and, and the U.K. So it's it's amazing watching these guys. Like Max Martin was a rocker as well. He was singing in metal yeah. bands in Sweden um, back in the day, and he's now crushing it in pop, obviously, with Taylor Swift and everybody. So there is a lot of of crossover. Um, I One of my favorite co-write sessions with a rocker was uh, a guy called Justin Hawkins uh, from a band. Oh, from the darkness. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I wrote with him in London and he was, what a voice. That guy can sing the phone book. And it was like, it was almost like I had to go like, okay, is this really good? Or is it just that like you're singing it so good? You know, like sometimes with these guys, they can just hit notes that, are, yeah, it's incredible. And now that Kiss is basically owned by Sweden because of that pop house uh, uh -huh. acquisition. How long is it before you are writing for AI Kiss? That's gonna be uh, in the future, right? Well, let's see, let's see what happens. <laughs> but I think that's a fascinating thing about you that three people might know you from three different things because of you being a solo artist, the softer music that you tend to write, but then also the production kind of world. So is that kind of where you wanna be for a long time, just letting people guess and not know the full story? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I kind of love the idea that music is something that is very fluid and not cannot be put in a box. I think as artists, we are constantly evolving, constantly growing, constantly changing. And I feel my art has kind of done the same. Like, And I'm always so open for new ideas and new concepts and new collaborations like i was just in japan working with some japanese incredible producers and artists over there and that was you know like incredible i wrote this song that became the theme song for this anime manga show out there and and they just love this song and it opened up so many doors for me in asia and it's been so fascinating to learn from them too because i think we have something to learn from each other all of us um and i I kind of love that about the collaboration aspect of music, that there is this iron sharpens iron almost thing. Yeah. We really saw that with the hopeful as well with the movie was that Kyle, uh, the director, when I sent him the songs, he actually did a new edit of the film for the songs and added the songs in different places in the movie where I had never even imagined that they could go. And then he sends that edit back to me and I ended up going like, oh my gosh, this could then be inspired into this section and end up writing a new little bit um, that is in the film that was inspired from his edit. So it's like, it's really special. Yeah, well, two quick questions and then I'll let you go. And I'm endlessly curious about these things when it comes to somebody who does a lot but is very modest like yourself. So having all these certified, you know, gold and platinum singles around the world, do you have a room that has all your platinum plaques or do you just hide them and give them away? You know what? They're kind of spread around the world. <laughs> like some of them are in my garage. A few of them are in my sister's old bedroom in Sweden. <laughs> sure. Right. Some of them are in, you know, random studios where they've been sent and they have just kind of remained there. And I have a couple of them in LA too. So they, they're definitely like, like they're spread apart. I don't I don't like the idea of looking at those that stuff too much because I'm I always feel I want to have a blank slate and a kind of a fresh start every day and not think so much about what I've done but what I'm going to do. So I'm gr super grateful for them and for the awards, but there's it's not really what I want to kind of remind myself of. I want to be reminded of what's to come and the people out there that needing a song for tomorrow, you know. So you're looking ahead on the musical end, which is great. And the last question before I let you go, what's the number one passion outside of music? Is there a surprising hobby? Ooh, yeah. 
I don't know if it's surprising, but I love photography. Um, I'm just such a geek. I love on my travels to always document. And, you know, someone actually from my team was like, Jonas, you just got to make sure that your Instagram is not just beautiful, like nature things, because people want to see you play music. And I was like, yeah, good point. Because <laughs> I love, I just love beautiful sunsets and beautiful architecture or beautiful design, beautiful nature things. So I, I love photography and it's been a really cool way because you can look back and have your whole kind of, um, it's like almost like a journal mm -hmm. where you can in an Im image have capture a moment and a memory that can live on. So I love that. And eventually I think we'll get a coffee table photo book out of you. Yes, that needs to happen. Definitely. Well, the bottom line is looking forward to that. Congrats on the hopeful. Looking forward to the next solo album. Looking forward to those eventual Justin Hawkins, Darkness, Peter Bjorn, and John collaborations. Seeing the light of the day, whatever it is, keep up all the greatness, Jonas. Thank you so much, Ben. So great to talk to you today. And thanks for supporting the movie and the song. Really appreciate it. Outrocast.